Hi, I am Claudio Montanero, a medical student at the Catholic University. The beer is about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, insulin resistance, and ceramides. Definition Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is the build up of extra fat in liver cells that is not caused by alcohol. It is not more for the liver to contain salt fat. However, if more than 5 to 10% of liver weight is fat, then it is called a fatty liver. The more several form of NAF is called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. NAF causes the liver to swell and become damaged. We will be starting our journey with the adipocyte. Adipose tissue is loose connective tissue composed of cells called adipocytes. In the skin, adipose tissue provides insulation, whereas around organs, it serves as a protective padding. In addition, there is increasing evidence on the important role of the adipocyte as an active endocrine and paracrine organ, which secretes a large number of adipokines. Hormone-sensitive lipase is an intracellular lipase, or enzyme, that is capable of hydrolyzing lipids such as triglycerides. Located on the cell membrane are specific receptors for the hormone insulin. Under normal circumstances, when insulin binds to the insulin receptor, this triggers intracellular signals that suppress the activity of hormone-sensitive lipase. Sometimes, for a number of reasons, the intercellular signal following insulin's binding to its receptor is not properly transmitted. As a result of this insulin resistance, the activity of hormone-sensitive lipase is not suppressed. This leads to an increased activity of hormone-sensitive lipase, causing the hydrolysis of triglycerides. When this occurs, glycerol and free fatty acids form as products. Free fatty acids are then eventually released into the circulation. Free fatty acids released from adipose tissue circulate in the blood towards the liver. The free fatty acids are taken up by the liver where hepatocytes channel fatty acids into secretory pathways. In a state of hyperinsulinemia, there is increased synthesis of triglycerides, esterification, shown by the thickened left arrow, with consequent high rates of very low-density lipoprotein secretion into the bloodstream. At the same time, there is decreased oxidation of free fatty acids, shown by the thin right arrow. In blood vessels, the enzyme lipoprotein lipase, LPL, hydrolyzes the triglycerides of VLDL, the products of this are primarily monoglycerides and free fatty acids. Lipoprotein lipase converts a VLDL particle into a VLDL remnant particle called an intermediate density lipoprotein, IDL. Monoglycerides and free fatty acids are taken up by the adipose tissue cells. Some intermediate density lipoproteins get reabsorbed by the liver while others can be further modified. This further modification occurs in the capillaries by the action of lipoprotein lipase. As a result, more compact LDL particles are formed and more free fatty acids get absorbed by adipose tissue. Once inside the adipocyte, Three molecules of free fatty acids combine with one molecule of glycerol phosphorylcholine or two monoglyceride to form a triglyceride particle. In the adipocyte, the newly formed triglycerides are subsequently acted upon by hormone sensitive lipase. This causes them to again disassemble into free fatty acids and glycerol. As a result, the increased amount of free fatty acids is again released from the adipocyte into the blood circulation.
The free fatty acids released by adipose tissue become elevated in the bloodstream. These free fatty acids are then taken up by the liver, resulting in a vicious cycle. Application in medicine. Insulin is a hormone made by the pancreas, and it keeps your blood sugar level from getting too high. Hyperglycemia or too low hyperglycemia. Insulin resistance is a precursor to an accelerate of coexistent conditions such as type 2 diabetes, atherosclerosis, no alcoholic fatty liver disease, and probably obesity. Associated cancer. In addition, a substantial body of work support a role for ceramides in promoted insulin resistance. Ceramides are bioactive lipid intermediate which can alter membrane by cyclically properties. It's a serious disease caused by a growing epidemic. Fatty liver disease is a condition that's more common in those children who are overweight or obese, and it's essentially an accumulation of fat in the liver. Pediatric gastroenterologist Dr. Archie Ramaswamy says fatty liver disease is being diagnosed in children as young as six years old. There are associated conditions such as diabetes, insulin resistance, hypercholesterol. Children with fatty liver disease typically have no symptoms, so the disease is found through blood work. If severe and left untreated, it can lead to liver failure. The liver is an organ that also is more sensitive to this fat accumulation also. And it's not based just on a certain body mass index or a certain weight. There are a lot of factors that go into it also. Other factors like genetic conditions can also lead to fatty liver disease in children. What I like to do is a full workup to look for other genetic causes of liver inflammation and the elevation of liver enzymes just to make sure that we're not missing everything. Certainly having a family history of high cholesterol, diabetes, things like that also does make a child more prone to having those conditions but also to having uh, fatty liver disease. Limiting sugar and processed foods and encouraging a healthy diet and regular physical activity can prevent and treat fatty liver disease. For Lee Health, I'm Lindsay Morton. Plus, a snow down of this one by a small RNA could prevent but not re reverse obesity in mice. Perhaps augmented mitochondrial function brought about through suppression of this one. Improved whole body glucose metabolism by reduction in ectopic lipid and intracellular lipid metabolite, such as plasma membrane 1, 2, dicycle gracero acid coal 8, independent of weight loss. Cons. Various types of lipids are involved and molecular mechanisms that affect the agents of insulin are debated. These pathologies include symptoms as malaria, fatigue, sickness, each food accumulation, salience in the legs and abdomen, mental confusions. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or NAFLD is a liver disease that is not related to ethanol use that involves hepatic fatty infiltration. In this lesson, we're going to talk about why this happens, what are some of the risk factors, and we're also going to talk about the signs and symptoms of this condition and what we can do to manage and treat it. So again, it's a liver disease that involves hepatic fatty infiltration that is not related to alcohol. It is a spectrum of macrovascular hepatic steatosis that eventually leads to inflammation and eventual fibrosis. So essentially the liver starts to build up fatty deposits. Eventually it leads to inflammation of the liver. It's an infiltrate and the inflammation over long, long periods of time can lead to scar tissue or fibrosis. 
the etiology of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is essentially insulin resistance. So I'm going to talk briefly about insulin resistance and why this happens in the liver. So here is a cell that has an insulin receptor and there is glucose that needs to enter the cell. We need insulin to activate the insulin receptor and allow the glucose to enter the cell. But in a state of insulin resistance, that doesn't work. The insulin receptor doesn't work properly. We can't get the glucose in the cell like we need it to. What happens is glucose starts to increase. Insulin starts to increase. We become hyperinsulinemic. And these have a couple of different things that happen. The hyperinsulinemic state actually leads to activated or increased lipogenesis in the liver. Essentially, the liver will take that higher level of glucose and essentially convert it into fat. And because this is happening at a higher level, the fat is essentially abnormal. That fat making process becomes aberrant. It leads to fatty deposits in the liver. And this is how we actually get this disease in a simple way of describing it. The risk factors all are associated with insulin resistance. The risk factors for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease include the following. Metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, so something with insulin resistance. Both of those have insulin resistance. Hypertension is also associated. Dyslipidemia, you can imagine if there's lots of higher levels of fats in the blood, you can assume that the liver is making them and that there's an associated risk due to that. And what is interesting is that rapid changes in weight, including weight gain or weight loss, can lead to this condition as well. And we're going to discuss this later in the lesson as well. So, Issues in Ecuador. 15 years ago, doctors said that is what's common to find cause of fading liver in people over 45 years. But now that problem is also present by young people from the age of 17. No alcoholic fatty liver is seen more in adolescents because they are closer to fatty food and limits physical activity due to the use of video games and consoles. When you're insulin resistant, that is, you've got metabolic syndrome, pretty much every chemical in the body is not quite right. Some are up, some are down, few are actually at physiologically normal levels. Traditionally, the focus is on the big guns, sugar, insulin, and cholesterol. In this series, we take a look at some of the other players, who they are, what they're up to, and how they're part of the state of insulin resistance. In this episode, we don't look at a specific molecule, but at a state of being. If you're insulin resistant, odds are you have fatty liver. Now, you can have fatty liver without metabolic syndrome. Too much alcohol, viral infections, several commonly used drugs and supplements, hypothyroidism, and bad genes can all cause liver cells to accumulate too much fat. But metabolic syndrome is the biggest driver. In fact, there's a school of thought that thinks fatty liver alters the paracrine and endocrine functions of the liver to cause insulin resistance. The condition is considered to be a hepatic manifestation of metabolic syndrome, and there are moves afoot to give it a new name, MAFLD. Currently, it's called NAFLD, which stands for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, to distinguish it from alcoholic fatty liver disease. Metabolic associated fatty liver disease differentiates it from environmental and genetic conditions, and it has a lot less stigma than non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The thing about fatty liver is odds are you won't know you have a problem until you have a big problem, namely liver disease. 
by this time your liver is in serious trouble and may be beyond redemption. The condition starts off slowly. At first, liver cells are carrying a little extra fat. This is called steatosis. It's not ideal, but not hugely problematic. The liver is still able to do the gazillions of reactions it's tasked with, but it can create a little angst. One problem that often arises is portal hypertension. That is, the blood pressure is high in the blood vessel that connects the gut with the liver. Now, this increase in pressure causes damage to the endothelial cells. These are the cells that surround blood vessels. And they turn a little bolshy, making it harder for... Conclusion. Insulin resistance probably encompasses heterogeneous subtype with discrete mechanisms, but in most clinical situations, it ultimately reflects a topic lipid accumulation in insulin response organs. In some patients, current increase in intracellular ceramics may impair mitochondrial function and exacerbate lipid accumulation and insulin resistance. Modest weight loss can be effective in many scenarios, but it's difficult to achieve and substance without using meal re replacement, medication, or bariatric surgery. The findings are consistent with those of previous studies that support the development of experimental me medication that engage hepatic mitochondrial oxidation possible by reduction ceramide biosynthesis. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is now the most common cause of liver disease in the developed world. Largely caused by obesity and describes a spectrum of disease ranging from steatosis, fat in the liver, cetopatitis, fat with inflammation, Non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Progressive disease may cause fibrosis and liver cirrhosis. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is thought to represent the hepatic manifestation of the metabolic syndrome, and hence insulin resistance is thought to be the key mechanism leading to steatosis. Non-alcoholic steatohepatitis is a term used to describe liver biopsy histopathological changes, similar to those seen in alcoholic hepatitis, in the absence of a history of alcohol abuse. Non-alcoholic steatohepatitis is a silent liver disease, and it is almost always asymptomatic and diagnosed incidentally. The diagnosis is supported by the presence of obesity, hyperglycemia, hyperechogenic hepatic parenchyma on ultrasound, and increased alanine aminotransferase and aspartate aminotransferase. It is relatively common and thought to affect around 3 to 4 percent of the general population. It is more common in men due to the protective effects of estrogen. The progression of disease in patients with non-alcoholic steatohepatitis may be responsible for a proportion of patients previously labeled as cryptogenic cirrhosis. Approximately 20 percent of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis will develop cirrhosis and its associated complications. Associated factors Obesity Hyperlipidemia Type 2 diabetes mellitus Jejunoileal bypass Nutritional status, sudden weight loss or starvation, or overnutrition and total parenteral nutrition Drugs, amadarone, methotrexate Metabolic abnormalities, galactosemia, glycogen storage disease Thank you very much for watching the video.